Hi, my name is Carrie Smith with Unsafe Space, and this is a video about how to not wear a mask when you have to wear a mask. So I've been noticing that there are a lot of people, I've, I've joined some unmasked groups on Facebook, and um, if you are a person who doesn't want to wear the mask and has anxiety and fear about wearing it, this is a video for you. You can, I would suggest that you join uh, an unmasked group in your area. Uh, there's, I, I think I'm a part of one for the state of Texas and one for, you know, Unmask Austin, Unmask Texas, and another one for uh, Williamson County, Unmask Williamson County. Um, but see if you can find one near you because there are a lot of people in those groups who are sharing their experiences and sharing information about local stores near you that, that will have advice on which stores are uh, not requiring masks and which stores are, uh, by all outward appearances, requiring masks but not actually enforcing it. Um, and then they'll also have advice on which ones you can avoid. So I wanted to do this video because I saw a lot of people in these groups who have been complying all year and are get at the point where they no longer want to comply. And a lot of people seem to have fear and anxiety about going into stores. And so I thought I'll do a video about my experience because I think maybe it'll inspire people to take it off. This is not a video for people who want to wear the mask. I'm not trying to convince those people. Do what you want. But for those who don't want to wear it, a couple things I'll say. I haven't really worn it all year. And um, I live in Texas, a state which did do a state mask mandate for the greater part of the year. And I managed to not wear one just by uh, avoiding the places that were really authoritarian about it and enforced it. Um, or sometimes going in those places and having in a confrontation, but not usually. Most of the times I avoided those. And the other thing I did was um, I just tested it. And so this is something definitely in Texas now, we don't have a state mask mandate anymore. Um, although some businesses are saying that they require it, you can, you can start feeling comfortable not wearing it just by testing and seeing which places are going to enforce it and which ones are not. So in my experience, HEB, which is a grocery chain here in Texas, HEB has the mask requirement signs up outside. I'm sure you guys, if you're in Texas, you've seen these. They At some HEBs, they have people standing by the door offering you masks or asking if you have a mask and, and offering to give you one. Um, they, I think, I believe they are a company that, for example, has an internal unspoken rule that they're not going to enforce it although they have all of the from outward appearances it looks like they have a mask requirement i haven't worn a mask in heb all year and that's not just in in williamson county that's in austin too um so what i would usually do uh during the during the mask mandate here in texas i would go in without a mask and somebody would say hey do you need a mask they would at the door would you do you need a mask and i would just say oh no thank you i don't wear them with a smile and then just keep walking. No one ever, no employee ever stopped me and told me I had to wear one. Um, and now, now that the mask mandate has been lifted, most of the times they don't even ask me. <laughs> they, they're standing there in case someone wants one, but they don't even say anything usually anymore. I just walk in without one on. So I've, I've, uh, I've never had, a, that's a great store if you're in Texas, you can trust me, try, try an HEB and see what happens. Um, I would say before you try this with any store to see if they're going to enforce it or not, know what you're going to do ahead of time before you go in. That way it doesn't take you by surprise and you're not letting your emotions rule you in the moment. So sometimes I'll go into unknown stores just to see if they have a mask requirement on the door. I'll go in without the mask just to see if they say something or not. Um, a good example is there's two Goodwill locations near me that have a mask requirement on the door, but they don't enforce it. I just go in without it. And I know ahead of time, I decide if they tell me I have to wear it, am I going to wear it or not? And know that ahead of time so that you're not just reacting in the moment. And so um, there are stores where I've gone in um, where the, you know someone has said you have to wear it. So I've, I went to a Goodwill in a different part of the state recently where they did say at that one, not my local ones, but a different one. I went in, he said, do you have a mask? I said, yes, but I don't wear them. He said, you have to wear one here. And I already knew I was gonna comply if they told me I had to, so I just put it on. Um, that way it takes any of the, it kind of removes a lot of the anxiety that you probably have about being, because what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is they ask you to comply. 
And if you know that, well, in that case, I'm going to comply, then cool. Then just go ahead and see, see, make them ask you, make them tell you, because you don't know if you're going to be able to get away with not wearing one or not, unless you try. Um, and, and in, and in some cases you may decide, no, I'm not going to put it on if they tell me I have to. It's not important enough for me to shop in this particular store. If they tell me I have to wear one, I'll leave or I'll s say why I'm leaving and I'll leave. But, you know, so just know that ahead of time. The other thing I was going to say is that uh, you should know ahead of time what will happen if another customer of the store confronts you. Because we've all seen these awful cell phone recorded videos of people having confrontations and you don't want to end up in a situation like that. And so I would say, you know, visualize what will happen if someone uh, confronts you and tries to shame you or um, tries to get into it with you. And in my experience, that's only happened once all year of me going into HEB without a mask, Target without a mask. Um, only once has someone, uh, a customer confronted me that I can recall. And it was, uh, I already knew I had already decided, well, at that time I had decided if somebody, I'm going to try and respond with kindness and just ignore them and go about my business. And in this case, it was a guy at, at the checkout counter at a grocery store and, um, he was in line in front of me and he said something to the uh, checkout girl, he said, you know, how stupid do you have to be not to wear a mask these days? And then he glared over and gestured at me. And so I just said, have a nice day, sir. That's it. He didn't say anything else. What's he going to say to that? I mean, I assume he could have been unhinged enough that he tried to start a fight when I told him to have a nice day, but thankfully he wasn't. So that was the end of the interaction. I wished him a nice day. He angrily put his groceries together and left. Um, I think I think confronting people with a smile and, and like a real smile, not a, a an aggressive or antagonistic one or sarcastic one, but a real smile is will disarm a lot of people. Not always, but I think it'll disarm a lot of people. So just know what you're going to do ahead of time if somebody confronts you. I've also had other ideas in my back pocket in case it happens. It just hasn't happened to me yet in, uh, from a, from another customer, but. Um, one thing I've thought, you know, if it, the next time it happens, if it happens again, is just, just straight up ignoring them, just completely ignore them because how can it escalate if you don't get involved, if you just walk past them, like you didn't even hear them, you know? <laughs> like, so that's what I've been planning on doing if it comes up again. So, so whatever it is, decide what it is you're going to do. So you don't end up in some crazy fight. The other thing I was going to say is airplanes travel. So I saw a lot of people in these groups who ex are expressing anxiety about traveling, people who can't wear the mask for a long period of time uh, because of asthma or because of uh, anxiety or PTSD, a lot of different reasons why people can't wear it and, or just that it, it makes it hard to breathe. I can't, I'm not going to wear it for that long either. I just, I want those people to know I've been traveling, not a lot, but probably more than most people the past year and uh, I have some tips based on the airports I've been to and the, the airlines I've been on. The only negative experience I've had was on Delta. They were very strict. They were very authoritarian about it. However, I don't know if that was because that, that was indicative of what the experience is like on the airline overall, or if it was because I was in first class. I happened to be on a, someone, someone else bought a ticket for me. Um, it was a first class ticket and I think it may have been because I was sitting in first class and they're naturally more atten attentive to people in first class. They're constantly seeing if you want anything and they're coming by and taking care of you and they're looking at you. And so, so on that Delta flight, you know, I tried to do what I've done on all other airlines and flights and just wear it under my nose and they would not let me do that. They, I, they came over uh, several times, and at, this was early on during the ma mandates and stuff. This was over six months ago. Um, I wanted to have fun with them, so I did. But you, I wouldn't. Don't do that unless you know. Like I just wanted. So I had a. I had one of the masks on that they give you the um, the ones that look look like surgical masks, but they're not. But anyway, I had one of those on, <clears throat> and so I just kept pulling it. I'd pull it over my nose and it would come off my mouth and they would say, no, no, back down over your mouth. And I pull a lot. So we had a bit of <laughs> just a little, I wanted to see how long they would be going up, no, down, down, up. Um, 
but but I eventually I had to put it in my nose on that one. It was awful. It was an awful experience, and it was like that on all four segments of that uh, flight, or it was two segments, two segments of a flight that I flew on Delta, and um, I would not do it again. Um, but so I would say avoid Delta just to be safe because I don't know if that was indicative of the whole experience, um, and avoid first class. Don't don't fly first if if you're a person with means. I would say it's better off being in coach if you don't want to wear the mask. So um, I just flew a weekend ago, a week ago, and I was in three airports in three different cities, and I was, uh, I had four flight segments, and I didn't wear a mask in the airport, in any three of the three airports at all, at any time, other than right when I went through security, and right before I boarded the plane. Um, so if you're a person who doesn't want to wear it, you know, chances are nobody bothered me. Chances are nobody's going to bother you. I walked around just like this. So a couple tips. Uh, I like to take the bandana because first of all, I like the bandana style wise. I wish more people would wear bandanas. So it doesn't feel awful to me to have one of these around my neck. I like it anyway. So uh, it's also super easy if you, if someone does tell you you have to pull it up over your nose, it's super easy just to do this while you pay or something. Um, so I have it here. Plus, I think there's something psychological that happens with people where if you're walking around and they see you without the mask, but they see this here, psychologically, they're thinking, oh, she's a person who complies. It just fell down for a minute and she didn't notice or something. I really do think having it here around my neck prevents a, a certain number of people who would otherwise say something if I didn't have anything at all. I, th I think it prevents them. From, they, they don't, they stop themselves. They don't say anything because look, I've got it here. I'm well-intentioned, right? I'm one of you good masked people. It just came down for a minute. So I would say wear a bandana um, around your neck. And uh, this is another just personal opinion, but I think I love hats. I, I think everybody should wear my hats, men and women. Sometimes I'm like, maybe they are just distracted by the fact that I have a big hat on. I especially like to wear a hat when I'm traveling. <laughs> so get <laughs> if you have something big and distracting, maybe that also will keep them from saying anything about the fact that you're not wearing the mask. But but yeah, if it makes you feel better and you're about to travel, just know I don't wear it in the airports and no one's ever said anything to me. I even on this past trip, this past weekend, I went to two different like coffee shops and or restaurants uh, or little bodega kind of shops in each of those three airports and nobody ever said anything. I checked out, I bought my, you know, my peanuts and my water bottle and I bought all that and nobody, even when I'm in the shop, which has mask requirement signs up, the airport has mask requirements, signs up, nobody ever said anything to me. That was my experience. So um, if that makes you feel better, it can be done. Um, this also leads me to another point, going to the shops. So to prepare for the flight, Definitely take a large water bottle. Definitely take a snack that you can eat or several snacks that are come in small bite-sized pieces. So whether that's little pretzels or nuts or goldfish or something, take something that's a lot of little pieces. And um, what I usually would do when I would board is I've flown American and United and I've had a pretty good experience on both in terms of them being very lax about their required mask mandate. And so usually when they would start boarding, I would get in line. And then when I got with, when you get within sight of the agents at the gate, go ahead and cover, like I just, I would cover my whole nose like this with my bandana. So that the first time they see me, they see me complying. Cause you don't want them seeing, oh, who's that person in line who's not wearing the mask, right? So as soon as I get in line to board, I would do this. And then usually what would happen uh, three times out of four on American uh, on this past uh, past trip, they told me, once you get up there, they say, oh, we don't allow bandanas anymore. Do you have a mask? Do you have one of these masks? And I say, oh, no, I don't. Oh, thank you. And then they give you one of those awful fake surgical ones. And so uh, you put that one on in front of them over your nose and everything. And that way they see you. They see you complying. And as you walk onto the plane, so they give you one of these, right? One, one of the American flights, they didn't, they let me wear the bandana, which is weird because they said it's our company policy. We have to give you one of these. Um, so I tested that on all four just to see. And so three out of four, 
they'll give you one of these. So, you know, take the time, take your, I take this down and right in front of them, right before I get on the plane, I go ahead and put it on over my nose and, oh, thank you, you know, and then walk past them and start boarding. And I don't like wearing this for any amount of time. So I usually have a coffee in my hand or a water bottle. So as soon as I walk past them and I'm on that bridge or, you know, that long corridor to get onto the plane, I just pull it down. Um, Cause there's no flight attendants. There's no personnel in that bridge. And so why not take those moments to breathe? I'm not going to be wearing, I, I just, I do not wear, I am not used to wearing it. I have not been wearing it. So um, I'm not going to wear it on, on that, on that bridge. But anyway, once I get close to the airplane door and there's going to be flight attendants there, pull it back up over my nose, board the flight, you know, look them in the eye. Hi, they see you. It's the big hat girl. She's complying or, you know, whatever. This girl's, this person's not someone to watch. They're complying. Um, walk past them. And as soon as I'm past them and I'm walking to my seat, unless I see another flight attendant in the aisle looking at, looking this way, if there's no flight attendant in the aisle down there, I usually just immediately pull it under my nose. I don't even have to use my fingers, but <laughs> pull it under your nose. For those of you who don't want to wear it and who want to be able to breathe. Um, I did have a passenger once say something to me as I was boarding. He was in first class. I was passing him and he said, it goes over your nose. And I just looked at him and said, mind your own beeswax. And he didn't say anything else. So um, that was a while ago. At this point now, I just want to be able to get through the flight and be able to breathe. So at this point, I probably wouldn't be confrontational if somebody said that, if that happened to me now. And he said, if, if on this past weekend, for example, if somebody had said it goes over your nose, I would have probably said, oh, I would have swallowed my disgust at that person and said, oh, and put it up. Um, but then as soon as you get to your seat or whenever you're comfortable, once you're seated, if there's no flight attendant around, I pull it down like this. And then generally, as speaking, if I see a flight attendant coming, uh, I don't pull it up because I think that, so, I mean, most of the time I don't pull it up because I think if they see you pulling it up, then they're thinking, oh, that's a person who's trying to break the rules. I need to keep an eye on that person. You know, she saw me and she pulled over her nose. So actually instead, if I see a flight attendant coming, I pull it all the way down and take a sip of water. And then if they do see anything, they see me putting it over my nose after I have the water. And in their mind, I truly think, I think they register then, oh, she's complying. It just, you know, it doesn't, they forget the fact it was like this when they first saw you because you're just drinking water and you did put it back over your nose and then they walk on by and then I'm back down again. Um, depending on how lax the flight attendants are, because some of them now, like Americans, not even doing snacks and beverages anymore, they let you have sma snacks and beverages and you can pull it down when you're having snacks and beverages, but they're not handing them out anymore. So um, depending on how attentive the flight attendants are, you can get away with pretty much not wearing it the whole flight. I mean, on all four legs of this recent trip, I had it down here the whole time around my neck pretty much. Um, I ate peanuts one by one <laughs> or in cashews. I had pretzels. I just ate slowly and drank water. If you have a COVIDian as a seatmate, if you have one of these mask holes sitting beside you, that's obviously going to probably be a problem. They may try and bring a flight attendant over and, and cause a disturbance, but just trust and, and, and that you don't have that person until proven otherwise. That's what I did. So all four of these flights, there were people beside me and I, I usually get a window seat so that I'm further away from the flight attendants coming by and I can turn my head towards the window a lot, you know, and I, that way there's only one person beside me instead of two on either side. Um, and so uh, I, I just trusted that they wouldn't say anything and they didn't. I had one seatmate who kept giving, like kind of looking over at me and every time she'd look over, I'd just take a sip of water. So, <laughs> but generally I think people are going to mind their own business. Most people, unless it's a really disturbed mass call authoritarian who wants to start a fight. But most people, even if they're annoyed that you're breaking the rules, they're not going to say anything. One girl, one seatmate I had, we talked the whole time. I, you know, just treat 
treat them with kindness and as if they're not going to object. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised in most of the cases. So one girl that was sitting beside me, I talked to her, we were friendly. I had it down pretty much the whole flight. She ended up pulling hers all the way down and talking to me just by virtue of being in a conversation with me and seeing that I had it down here. And so um, you may end up in a situation where you have a bad seatmate at some point, obviously, but I, my advice would be to go in, uh, treat people with good faith until you have reason to change that, right? Um, so then once you're, once you're deplaning, is that the word? Once you're, once you're getting off the plane, um, you should definitely put it back up over your nose. And I say that because a lot of these airlines now will, they say anyway that they'll put you on a list and you can't fly that with them anymore if you're seen, you know, uh, not complying. So I do the same thing I do when I get on the plane. Uh, when I get off the plane, I make sure the flight attendant sees me complying. Um, so as you know, we're getting our luggage and stuff, I'm usually like this. And then once we start walking and walk past the flight attendants and the pilots at the end, I've got it back over my nose. As I walk by them, I get on the bridge to, to walk into the airport and it's off. I just take it completely off once I'm in the airport. And just, you know, until, until the next flight, I always, I just wanted to test them so I could tell people what it was like. So I, I don't even use this one again. I just, at the next flight, I do the bandana again. And then they will say, oh, we require one of these. Do you have one? No. Okay. And let them see me putting it on. But, um, but yeah, definitely wear it when you're getting off the plane. And I know they will report you because when I had that bad experience with Delta, when I was having my fun with the, the flight attendants and I had it like this and then they were like put it over your nose and so it, i would do that and then you know back and forth they actually one of them said it was really funny one was like your mask must be broken and they gave me a new one <laughs> which is funny it's yeah it's broken um but they reported me so that when i got to um the gate for my my connecting flight they call me to the desk the delta people call me to the desk and they asked me do you have a problem with our mask policy and, you know, I was wearing it and I said, no, oh no, I just didn't know how to, I had it on wrong and they had to show me and it was broken. So they gave me a new one, you know, and they're like, okay. So, but they will, to avoid that, to avoid, you know, being reported to, um, to either to the next flight, uh, you know, at the gate or, or just to avoid being on some no fly list with that airline, you know, go ahead and comply when you're, when you're stepping off the plane. So that's it. This is, I hope this advice helps people who are going to be traveling soon and who are afraid of what might happen if they don't wear the mask. And I hope that everyone who doesn't want to wear it starts to become more bold and more courageous. And at the very least, you know, test whatever limits you're comfortable testing, because I think these things are atrocious. I think they're dehumanizing. Um, there's, they don't have the science on their side for these things. And I think it's especially psychologically damaging. It's damaging for all of us to see everyone wearing this all year, but especially children. And, you know, they want to say, I'm wearing this because I care about others. BS. I'm not wearing it because I care about others. And I care about kids who are looking around and seeing adults engaging in this absurd, ritualistic, hyper paranoid, hysterical behavior, conformist behavior. So I don't wear it because I think it's good for people to see a person without a mask. I hope this helps you. Good luck. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, we have a deep content library that includes interviews with everyone from Mike Cernovich to Megan Murphy. So go check it out. If you'd like to see more, please consider supporting the show by visiting unsafespace.com slash donate. You can find us on all the major social media platforms, at least for now, and you can find a community of like-minded individuals on our Unsafe Space chat on Telegram. See you there. Warning. This is an unsafe space. Dangerous ideas have been detected. The content of this production has not been authorized by the cathedral. Pay no attention to it.
the following co-conspirators have been unpersoned and marked for cancellation. Please direct any appeals to our internal review board, at dev slash null. Please note that seppuku, while encouraged, does not guarantee absolution. If you think about it, no one should be allowed to express opinions. But don't. Think about it, I mean. That's not your job. Thinking has been scientifically proven to be less efficient than compliance. Thank you for participating in our longitudinal study of new and exciting messenger RNA gene therapy techniques. Please make a note of any abnormal growths, loss of vision, difficulty breathing, or death. Computer voice Curtis Never mind, that last line is fake news. Please disregard it and return to your safe space immediately. There will be cake.